and and before uh, how many how many search uh, similar you uh, you heard before uh, what do you mean how many because because omar uh, told me before and that uh, this is a series of the blockchain for blockchain uh, oh, yeah. or something right okay. this is the fifth one i guess fourth or fifth i'm not sure okay okay mm -hmm. that's good that's good yeah i think yeah. i think it's very good i think very good yeah my expertise is also not blockchain i'm also cyber security oh really yeah. okay okay so so uh, so you which area the system security or the network security yeah network security M mostly for the red team but okay. i'm trying to combine the artificial intelligence and blockchain for cyber security as you do yeah yeah mm -hmm. because i think blockchain uh is a hot topic so mm -hmm. um it, yeah there, 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 there's some there could be some the good good point mm -hmm. there yeah there, there, there will be some good point and if you can find some good scenarios i think uh, of course yes absolutely it's a very good yeah, yeah it's a good it's a very good uh, combination yes with the blockchain okay we are live i guess right now mm -hmm. so we uh we start right now or yeah i'll do a little bit of introduction and then okay. i'll give the floor to you okay Hello and welcome to the IEEE Young Professionals channel. And today we are having a special guest from Technical University of Denmark. Dr. Menk, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thanks Dr. Menk, I'm... Thank you, sorry about yes. that. Dr. Menk, I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a minute just after my brief introduction. So today we are going to talk about blockchain enabled collaborative intradition detection systems. But before that, Dr. Man, I before our broadcast, I did my homework and I Googled your name. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but so far you published three books, seven chapters in books, 63 journal articles, and 83 conference papers. And I even couldn't count the awards. There were too many awards. Is that correct? Uh yeah yeah I I guess you you are looking at my homepage right so yeah right. <laughs> yeah of course yeah of course yeah <laughs> yeah yeah good job That's, yeah <laughs> yeah thank you good job you did a good job not me <laughs> That's so impressive and inspiring so without further ado I'll I'll give you the Dr Meng Dr Meng the floor is yours thank you thank you very much uh as I for for the uh, introduction let me share my uh slides okay. Wait a minute. Okay, so can you uh, see my uh, slide? Yes, I can see the slides. Okay, yeah. Then I guess I can start. So yeah, thanks again for the uh, invitation uh, from the Ajibori uh, Young Professional Turkey. So for the Ajibori, the Connecting Experts talk. So today my uh, topic is the, actually is the introduction on the blockchain enabled collaborative introduction because I I, I changed the, the title a bit uh, from the original one, but it, it, it's the same. So I'm Wei from the um, DTU, uh, Denmark. So first, I'd like to introduce uh, DTU, and uh, you know, so it's located in Denmark, and uh, in a in a small city, I, I can say a, a small a small town, right, uh, called Lingby, just uh, ten kilometers far away from Copenhagen. Yeah, so actually, normally we can say it's it's in the uh, Copenhagen, uh, the grid uh, area, and uh, these are some of the pictures uh of dtu so 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 you can see so this one uh is the main building of our uh, computer science yeah so but now we move to we move to another building nearby yeah but uh, they are very close so these are some of the uh the the same right in, in summer and it's it, it, yeah we think in summer it's really nice so welcome um all of you Right after the COVID-19 situation, 
have a chance to visit visit us and visit uh, DTU. Okay, and then uh, let me briefly introduce my uh, research directions. So I'm sorry that because I actually I catch a, a little cold these days, so my voice is not that <clears throat> it's not that stable sometimes. So basically, my main area is in the engine detection. Uh, so uh, for over ten years in this uh, direction, and uh, if you are familiar with engine detection, then you know it has been developed for over forty years, right? So as a technology. Uh, it's mature, so that so that means uh, right now, most researchers in this area they are trying to move, right? So for me, so I'm trying to apply the main the main idea of engine detection to other topics and areas, right? Some some maybe uh do movement, like right? the smartphone security, and also some like the malware uh, detection. Yeah? We just uh, apply the engine detection technologies uh, directly. And also, uh, I apply it to the biometric authentication because the main idea is the same, right? Because the biometric authentication is to judge whether the current user is legitimate or not, right? So it's the same. And also, I'm working on the trust management because right now, most system and organization on the networks, they are distributed, right? So even for intrusion detection, so right now, Engine detection, we have the distributed engine detection systems or distributed engine detection networks, or later I will uh, mention the collaborative engine detection system and networks. So in, in, in such network and systems, insider attacks are big threats, okay? So because the attackers have a good knowledge, a good understanding of your uh, network and the system, so they can try to compromise just the one node in your system and then based on it and the, try to compromise the other nodes. So the trust management aims to uh, detect the, the, the insider malicious nodes, uh, the, the insider attacks. So we, we can uh, develop some different the trust management schemes and uh, measure the reputation of each node. Okay. And now, so I'm also doing the blockchain, uh, the blockchain because blockchain can provide some benefits that that are demanded uh, by security and also by engine detection. So it's a good, yeah, it's a good technology here. And then also I'm doing uh, many work on the IoT, right? The IoT actually provide many uh, topics for all cyber security researchers. Right. So, so, so right now you can see there are many uh, papers about the blockchain, about the IoT. Yes. Okay. So this is the uh, outline today. So first, I will briefly introduce the blockchain technology because I can see this is a serious talk of the blockchain. So I, I believe that the many, uh, many talks will talk about the, the blockchain, uh, the the background. So I, I won't. I won't uh, focus on this part, right? So then I will introduce the engine detection, uh, engine detection systems, and also the collaborative engine detection networks. And last is the blockchain-based collaborative engine detection. So how to apply the blockchain to engine detection area? Okay, so first uh, I'd like to highlight right, the the blockchain research right? because it's really it's really hot, right? So for IEEE, we have two uh, big blockchain uh, conferences. One is called just called IEEE Blockchain, right? I'm also the the PC chair for the first edition. So uh, in in 2018, actually we received 170 papers in total, and we have a very good acceptance rate. You can see just about 15%. And the last year, we have uh, a bit more uh, submissions and we keep uh, almost the same acceptance rate. Also around, uh, uh, we can say 16%, right? All, all, all of this uh, is about the regular paper, uh, regular paper. And another actual uh, conference on blockchain is called ICBC, right? So the first edition is in, in the last year. 
So last year they have around 150 uh, submissions and they have a, they also have a very good acceptance rate around the 20%, right? But we can see just 30 papers there. So yeah, it's very competitive. And this year they have much more, much more submissions maybe due to the COVID-19 situation, right? So, but we can see they accept basically the same number as the, as the 2019, right? Uh, the 30 papers. So the acceptance rate is very low, right? Very low. So we can see um, it's, very, it's very competitive, yes, for the blockchain research. Okay, so it's, it's an active research area. Yes, it's true and they're, so we can see the so Bitcoin uh, is very known and there are over 2,000 2, cryptocurrencies, right? At the moment. So yeah, it's really a big, uh, a big area. But of course, most of us, we are more familiar. We are more familiar. Okay, I can see. Uh, I got, yes. Yeah, so most of us are familiar with the Bitcoin, right? So yeah, I won't go into the uh, much detail. Okay, so let's see the difference between the centralized digital currency and the decentralized digital uh, currency. So what's the main difference, right? Yeah, the main difference is that who maintains the ledger, right? This is the, <clears throat> this is the major difference here. So for the centralized dig uh, digital currency, so we only have one ledger. Uh, we, we have one ledger per user. So each user has one ledger, right? And we need to trust the bank as a central, as a central, uh, centralized authority, right? So we trust the bank, right? So, so they can, uh, they can maintain all this, uh, currency, right? So, and we give us, uh, the, the consent there. But for decentralized, digital currency. So we only have one single and a shared ledger for all the users. Yeah. And uh, to, uh, to achieve the consensus or the consent, so sometimes we can use the digital uh, signature so we can distinguish the users. And for this one, we need to trust the technology, right? To make it, to make it uh, workable. So if you have any uh, questions, so you can write down your questions in the chat because I'm I'm not sure whether the uh, video whether the uh, audio is good, but uh, you can try. Otherwise, you can uh, write your message in the chat. So I will uh, I will I will check all these questions. Okay, after the uh, after the talk. And this is the high level uh, view on blockchain, right? So actually, this is the main the data structure, right, in a blockchain. A block is tied to the previous block. And uh, we have many, the ledger, right, the applications, right, in the payload, so we'll in each uh, block. And we also, we have some, the consensus, right, so how to uh, achieve the consensus among different users participates. There are many, I will also mention them later. Okay, so this is a, a detailed view of a blockchain. So basically we have a payload, as I just said, right? The payload is very important. So it could be the application specific the records or just the transactions, right? Like the Bitcoin. So we have many transactions there. And the block can also include a timestamp. Timestamp aims to uh, avoid the replay uh, attack, right? And also we have a hash value, okay? The hash value is the, is the value to hash the entire previous block in the chain. So in, in this case, we can ensure the integrity of the of the shared data are stored in the blockchain. So this is the uh, a big uh, benefit that provided by blockchain technology. Okay, and uh, we need to uh, do something right with and to make agreement among different users. So we need the consensus here, right? In old days, we, we just uh, choose like the majority vote, right? So we just count how many people vote for you, then we can make a decision, right? But in blockchain, we, we have many uh, more, we have many more uh, the, the ways and options, right? To make consensus, we'll, take, uh, we'll talk later. 
And then we also have the smart contract. Smart contracts very important, right? In old days, uh, when we try to do some transactions or do some uh, do something uh, with others, for example, to buy or rent a house, right? So we also we we need to sign or to provide the contract, right? But uh, sometimes we need a lawyer, right, to to make sure that the contract is good and uh, and uh, is effective, right? But in blockchain, right, uh, the smart contract actually is just a a program, right? It's just a program. It's uh, it's nothing more than that. So here is a is 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 a simple example. It's a simple example here. So we can see the contract, the smart contract. There are multiple the if and then, right? So actually, we just to track whether the current situation satisfy any. Uh, conditions and then we can just execute right some uh, yeah, some code there so this is how we can uh, define the smart contract right in practice so it's just some code right it's a program just a program here so to help us to check any condition any conditions are met and then we can execute the relevant code and then there are many types of blockchain, right? The, the, for, uh, the first one is the permissionless blockchain. So all the entity or the, uh, or the participants, they can, they can read and write, right? The, the data in the, mm. and also can uh, join the consensus process. They, they, have, they, have, they have the right to read and write. Another one is the permissioned blockchain. So maybe one participant, they only have one, like what one uh, privilege like the read or write something there, right? But it, but the, it it, <clears throat> it will be controlled, right? By the by the uh, administrator, right? By the administrator. So the permissioned blockchain can be further categorized into public and the private, right? The the blockchain. And and the, uh. Which one, it depends on the scenario and the system that you focus on, right? You focus on. Okay, and then for the- There is one question, Dr. Mink, but yes. do you want to answer sure. now or later? Uh, okay, let me check the chat. Hmm. Let me check. <clears throat> okay, I, I cannot uh, open the, the chat. Or... Oh, I can. <laughs> Tell you the question: What is the exact difference between decentralized and the distributed? Oh, decentralized and the distributed. Decentralized, yeah. Decent decentralized means that, how to say? For example, for example, because uh, for centralized, you know, there's a central server, and there are many. The we can see, uh, in introduction we can see there are many detector, right? Detector, and we have one central server, right? So the central server will collect all the uh, data from the uh, detectors, okay? So decentralized, oh, okay, I let me first in, uh, explain the distributed. Distributed means that we, we don't have the central server. We only have the detectors. And each detector, they can collect the data and analyze the data by themselves, okay? So these are the distributed. For decentralized, decentralized means that we still have the central, uh, the central server here. But the, actually, we organize them in different layer. So that means we we could have two central uh, central server, but in different layer, and each and um, we we still have a central server. Maybe they can collect the data from some uh, from some detectors, but but it can also collect the data from another central server. So they are in they are located in different layer. It depends on how you organize the layers. So that means the decentralized. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, yes, the main difference is that the distributed. Mm -hmm. For distributed system on network, there's no central server. Yeah, there's no central server there. Yeah, okay. or no That's server awesome. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay, then uh, it's the consensus protocols. Uh, these are very famous one, and uh, I'm sure that you should know it, right? Where or, or already uh, heard, heard it? So first one is the proof of work, the POW. POW is that we just give you a challenge and you spend many resources, many time, and 
and many the 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 uh the power right to solve the to solve the challenge and then uh, if you are the winner then you can uh, mine a block or you can add a block right so you are the winner and uh, uh, yeah and the second one is the proof of stake the pos pos is that you can uh present a, a random or a, a random wares right or or something the the stake there if you have more stake then you win the game and you can add uh, you can add a block there but you can also to uh, uh to to define the stake here because based on your state standing network you can have different types of the stake right yeah and the last one is the proof of the elapsed time so we can randomly assign a time a timer to each participant right then we can define uh, for example the winner the winner means that the, the winner has ha, has the has the has the has more time than the others or has less time than the others when the time it uh, elapsed right so that there there are two two different directions that you can define uh, this consensus algorithm and right now there are many there are many more like the proof of burn you, you just burn something right because for state for the proof of stake you just present the state but later of course you can get back the stake but for the proof of burn you just burn it nothing left okay and also there are many like the proof of capacity, uh, capacity and also the importance or there are many right so you can check that maybe you can define your own uh, your own consensus and based on your system it's very interesting and it's very interesting okay and there are uh, i just just to mention, uh, briefly introduced the POW. And the POW was introduced uh, in 1992. So in, in, the, uh, in that time, actually the POW is not designed for blockchain, right? Because at, at that moment, we, we don't have a blockchain, right? So the original use of the POW is, is that try to defeat the DDoS attack. Because when the user they want to 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 request some resources from the server right so the server will send you a puzzle or challenge for the user to solve so after the user solved the challenge then the server will provide you the service or some resources there okay so so it it aims to uh, defeat the ddos attack Okay, another interesting question is that because sometimes, right, uh, or or how to say, so theoretically, so that there could there is a possibility that two uh, identity or two participants or two users they may win a, both of them they may win the game and they can buy a block, right, and and in this case which train because each of them will add a, will add a block then we have two trains right because the this block is different right so there are two trains then how to define or how to determine which train is valid which train is valid right so the rule is that the longest train is valid right in blockchain okay then if then if uh there are two identity for uh my block at the same time right how do you say because later uh when the because we have to when you add the block and you have to share the train right so it depends like the speed and some other factors so in the end there's just one uh, there's only one train with more the participants agreed so that train will be the longest train and the, and will be the only valid one uh okay so for pow so there are some advantages because yeah because there are many the blockchain platforms they use the pow right like the bitcoin so it's easy to implement and uh, easy to understand right it makes sense and uh, it's fair in some point of view because it you just to uh work hard right work hard so you have a chance to win the game right so we can say it's relatively relatively fair okay there are also many uh, limitations the first of course is a is a major one 
uh, it will waste uh, the computational power and many the computational resources, right? Especially nowadays, we don't want to waste the resources there. And also, it's the given the problem there there could be favor some particular groups, okay? Because for for some, uh, how do you say the uh, rich people, right? They all they already they have many the computational power or the resources. So of course they have a higher possibility to win the game, right? For example, the fifty one percent attack, right? That means one attacker they have more than uh, 50, uh, 51% the computational power. So the attacker can control the whole blockchain system, right? Yeah. And there are many the potential, the use cases for blockchain technology. So here just some examples, right? So the original use is for uh, commerce, right? Like the e-commerce, the payment, uh, and also the uh, P2P lending and some micro uh, micro finance, right there. there. There are many. And right now we can also, we can apply the blockchain to like the supply chain for food or for, yeah, for some other, and also for the uh, ownership, something there, and also for the IP, right? And uh, also there, there's some other like the uh, digital rights, right? So because we basically, we based on we based on this, yeah, these four features here, yeah, on the left, the, the four features. The first important feature is the with blockchain, we don't need a, we don't need a centralized trusted party here. Yes. So that means we can, uh, we, we use the distributed system. Yeah. And then is that the, use the blockchain. So we can ensure the data integrity, right? So because uh, we just check the hash value, right? So, yeah, we can know whether it's uh, changed or not. And there's the data transparency. Yeah, it's very uh, important because as long as the data on the chain, then all the participants or all the users they can check the data. Right? They can check the data. It's just uh, it's transparent. And the last one is the system. It it can be self management. Yes. How to achieve this? So we have the consensus algorithm, and we also have the smart contract. Smart contract is very important, right? There are many the if them. Then we just check the conditions, and then the whole system and network they can, yeah, they can work by 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 its own. Right? There are also many the challenges for the blockchain, like the efficiency. Uh, like the blockchain, it can only handle the seven transactions per second, the TPS. So now it's approved, but uh, yeah, it's not that. It, it still needs some uh, improvement. For Hyperledger, Hyperledger can handle 1,000 uh, 1, uh, TPS, but uh, it's, it's still not good, good enough. We still can improve, improve the platform, yeah. And there are also many the security issues, uh, security issues. The attackers can use the blockchain for some, for some the, um, for some the the, the, the uh, malicious the purposes or to use the blockchain right to do some money uh, laundering or something right, uh, bad things there. And due to the popularity of blockchain right, so it's so right now it's a target for the attackers for cyber attackers right. And also there are many the privacy issues, as I just said, for the data transparency, because all the participants, they can read the data, right, on the train, stored on the train. So because their their data could be sensitive, especially for, from the healthcare organizations, right? So we want to keep those data uh, on the train, but uh, they, they, they should be private, right? So we can, we need, we need to uh, implement some privacy preserving uh, schemes there to protect the data privacy. One more question, Dr. Mike. Yes. Okay. Can you uh, maybe give an example for proof or elapsed time for Intel SGX? In let me check. Uh actually, I, I, <coughs> sorry. 
OK， 嗯 ，because 呃、uh, ，I I I provide the the example here， but actually I I didn't look it in in detail， so I can only uh briefly introduce their their idea is that uh, as uh, described here， right， because <coughs> they will distribute a uh, secure the random uh, the waiting time, the timer, right? To the, uh, to the, because you you, you have a trusted execution and uh, environment, right? So you have some nodes there, so you can distribute the timer, right? To to them, and later you can to to count, uh, the elapsed time, and you can you can define, right? The winner, and then the winner, they can, <coughs> they can uh. You can use the winner to do some of the the code later, yeah. But but this example, I'm I'm not that uh, I'm not that uh, uh, familiar because I'm I'm not particular, uh, particularly foc uh, focusing on the SGX. But right now, SGX is a very is also a very uh, hot topic there. So actually, we can we can we can have some different. We have we can implement different consensus algorithms in it, yeah. But the uh, proof of elapsed time is uh, they use right now, yeah. They use as an example right now. Hopefully it, it, it's uh, yeah. Hopefully, so you can check it. You can check it because uh, from my point of view, there there are many interesting topics right on the SGX, yeah, and the blockchain, yeah. So. Maybe you can you can you can you can try maybe you can deploy some other consensus there, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So okay, so let me introduce the intrusion detection. So first question is that what is an intrusion, right? So intrusions actually is relate to the uh, security policies. So we can say any events or any activities that violate. The security policies in your system or in your network can be the intrusions, yeah. And the intrusion detection aims to identify and detect all these intrusion uh, behaviors. And for an intrusion detection system, we shortly the IDS, right? For IDS, normally we have two major functions. One is the to record the information. And IDS can monitor the target objects and the record information, right? Locally, because we later we can analyze this data and uh, find some malicious uh, traffic or events there. And the second one is the alert generation. So when we identify there is a malicious event, then we have to uh, notify the security administrators so we can generate an alarm so we can notify the domain. So it's very important. And there are two general types of IDS. One is the host-based IDS, and then that, the second one is the network-based IDS. The data source is different. For host-based IDS, we just use the audit data, right, from the uh, audits and some of the record, right, the record logs, right, the firewall logs or the system logs, right. For network-based IDS, we mainly analyze the network traffic and the network events, right. As the as a data source, so it 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 focuses on the network uh, attacks, and then uh, based on the detection approaches, we can have two different uh, IDS types. So one is uh, the signature based detection, or we can call the misuse uh, detection. So we may need to do a signature matching, right? We uh, to compare the current events with or the pattern uh, database, right? the, the pattern database. So for such uh, detection approaches, we we need a pattern database in advance so we can compare, do the uh, do the uh, signature matching. Another detection uh, uh, approach is called anomaly based detection, right? So for, uh, for it, so first we need to build a normal profile. Yeah, on your system or network after a period of time. Okay, so we, we can build a normal profile. And then we need to compare the current uh, 
the current profile, the network or system profile with the stored, the normal profile. If we identify there is a huge deviation, then of, of course we can say, yeah, there could be a malicious behavior there. Right? So many machine learning uh, algorithms, and right now there, there could be some AI technology so we can apply here. So even some the, the, the data mining, data mining uh, techniques. And this is the uh, basic workflow of the uh, engine detection. So for mon uh, machine learning or the AI based uh, system, so we need some of the training data, we need some of the, uh, the training data here. And of course we need to uh, also to act, um, extract the features, the features. And then we, we can also, if, uh, if you use the, the, the pet, the uh, signature based detection, so we also we have the rules here. So then we can do the uh, signature matching or we can just uh, to use the machine learning or the AI, the models to help us to classify the inputs and classify the logs and classify the network events. And this table just uh, compares the signature based detection and the normally based detection. So for the signature based detection, the advantage is that uh, uh, it's more accurate, right? With much fewer false alarms, right? It's very important, it's very important. But the limitation is that it cannot detect the novel or we call the zero day attacks, uh, real data attacks, because we need a pattern, a pattern data, uh, database uh, in other ones so we can compare. Right. We can make a comparison there. In the, uh, by contrast, for the anomaly based detection, it's able to detect unknown attacks, right? Because we just to uh, identify the deviation, right? To identify the deviation. So we have a good chance uh, to identify some novel attacks or zero day exploits. But the limitation is that. Um, but the limitation is that it will cause a high false alarm rate, especially the first positive rate. And if you use the machine learning uh, techniques, so it's limited by the training data. Because in the practice, it's very hard to obtain a good number of the... Of the... Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, some noise. Yeah, could you please turn off your microphone? Thank you. Sorry about that, Dr. Man. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and, and it and it's limited by the training data because in practice it's very hard to get the a good number of the negative the negative uh, samples, right? To to train the machine learning algorithms. So uh, this this is the main limitation. So actually, uh, in, in industry. So most of the most of the software, so they will adopt the central based detection, right? But of course, they will also use the normally based detection to complement the uh, the performance from the central based detection, right? So so actually, they can complement each other, right? And for IDS, so actually, it's a basis for many other uh, techniques like the antivirus and also the IPS. IPS means intrusion prevention uh, systems yeah because for intrusion detection system it's only monitor analyze and notify and 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 alarm the administrators about the situation but when there is an attack it won't stop that but for ips it will when it uh, when it finds the attacks it will stop the attacks like it's very similar to the firewall it can like to block the IP address or block the or block the traffic or block some the port, yeah. And also, it's the uh, basis for the uh, honey port. Honey port is a trap uh, system. So we try to induce the attackers come in, and then we can collect all this data and analyze their uh, behavior, and later we can create the pattern, right? The patterns and the signatures for the signature-based uh, signatures. It's always, it's, it's an important security mechanism. Uh, and this is a real example, uh, Snort, right? Snort is an open source signature-based network engine detection system. 
it has been widely used in both research and the industry because they also provide a commercial version of thoughts. So this is the uh, workflow. So when the traffic, when the traffic coming, so first there is a decoder, right? And then we can extract the features in the pre-processor. Uh, pre we can extract some of the features and then we can do the uh, signature matching, right? In the detection engine, in the detection engine. And if there is a match, then we can generate alarms. Okay, so um, in old days we have the the single or the local, right? We talk about the uh, the local engine detection system, but the a single or or, or local uh, ideas is very hard to identify some complicated or multi-step attacks like the DDoS attacks, right? So that means so that means we need different nodes. They they can share the data or information, right? So in this case, we have the collaborative engine detection system or network, or we can call it distributed uh, engine detection system or network, yeah, just the name. And um, basically the, the idea is the same. The main feature is that it's allow different uh, nodes to share the information and the data, the required uh, information, right? With other nodes, with other nodes. So there are some the common components. Uh, first is the detector. Yes, we need we need it, of course. And then it's the collaborator. Collaborator here we can implement some trust management schemes, right? So we can work together with other nodes. So we can uh, share the data, share the information there. The last is the P2P communication, which which have uh, helps establish the physical collection uh, among different nodes. And for the uh, such collaborative system or networks, there are some uh, challenges. First is the data sharing. Uh, data sharing is a problem because nowadays there, are, as I just said, uh, most system network, they are distributed. So in this case, we, we want different uh, users or participants, they can share their data. For example, for the entry detection, we, need, we, we want to share the data and improve the detection uh, accuracy or the detection performance, right? But in practice, there there are some the the concerns, especially the privacy uh, concerns. And in Europe, we uh, we have the GDPR, right? So uh, there's a concern, right? When we share the data, share the data. And then it's the trust management, right? Because the the uh, traditional the uh, collaborative system and network, they are vulnerable to insider attacks uh, due to the distributed uh, architecture, architecture, yes. <clears throat> because the attackers, they have, they have uh, authorized access right to the network. So they have a good, uh, good understanding of the environment. Okay, so how to uh, build a robust trust management, right? To help us uh, identify the insider attacks. It's another challenge. Okay, and then let's uh, let's see how to combine the blockchain with the engine detection uh, system. Yep. So first, so uh, let me check. Yep. Let me uh, check. So when we apply the blockchain to engine detection, we just uh, relied on its benefit that we don't need. We don't need a trusted third party. Yeah, we don't need a trusted third party. So we can uh, do it in a distributed way, right? Then for data sharing, yeah, for data sharing, normally we, ha uh, we have two requirements for it, right? When we share the data, one is the mutual trust because uh, in old days when we share the data, we need to know another party and then know where and we, need to ensure that party is well known and trusted, right? So multi-trust. And that's the data privacy, right? We need to ensure the privacy of the data. Then there is a solution. This is it's just a theoretical uh, solution here. So 
for example, we can assume that we can we can um, have a have a blockchain uh, box, right? Which we can just put something uh, in it, right? And we also we make a data sharing agreement, and then all when all the parties they access the blockchain box and read the agreement, they need to confirm the ownership of the data, right? They have to confirm, and they cannot uh, repudiate it, right? So it's very important. So, but the box actually is is just uh, an idea here. It's just an idea here. But we, uh, we 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 have different ways to do it in practice. Okay, yeah. And for the data privacy, for example, we use the box. That means we can. <laughs> so one more solution is that we share the transfer data, right? to others, right, instead of the raw data. And we can also, we can uh, put the case, for example, for the machine learning uh, algorithm, we can just put the algorithms into the box. And we, and then another, another party, they just access the box and uh, retrieve the algorithm. And then they can use the algorithm uh, with their own data and they can get the results. They can get results. So there are many different uh, use cases of of the uh, blockchain box, right? But it's a it's a it's just an idea, right? To do that. Well, for the trust management, uh, yes, there's just an uh, example. So the blockchain technology provides a good way, right? Here, there's just an, an early work here, Alex. Alex, they introduced a blockchain based uh, CIDS, which uh, applied the blockchain uh, aiming to, uh, to improve the trust management here. So they consider the raw alarms generated as transactions in a blockchain, in a blockchain, yeah. And, and then the, all the collaborating nodes, they adopt the consensus protocol to guarantee uh, the validity of the transactions before putting them in the box. So, so all the nodes, they need to check, check the data, right? Where a consensus protocol. But in, that, in, in their work, they didn't implement anything there. They just proposed a framework, the idea here. So there's no uh, any results uh, there. Uh, but of course the, the idea, is uh, the idea is valid? Yes. Yeah. So basically, we uh, base we we adopt such idea, right, to do the com uh, to do the combination in practice. Okay. Then let's see some uh, practical work. Uh, the the research work here. So this work is just the the actually the, the same work uh, done by Alex. By uh, by Alex. <coughs> Sorry. So they have uh, basically they have two layers. One is the alert exchange layer, and then it's the consensus layer, right? It's very, it's very. Uh, you can see the figure, so uh, it's easy to understand. So each node they maintain right uh, a train, right? Maintain a train, and then later they can share the al alarms, and all of the nodes they will check the alarms and track whether it's uh, valid or not, whether it's a malicious alert or it's a true, uh, it's a true alarm, okay? So it, each node can check and then can add to its own block, block its own chain. And then later there's just one uh, valid chain, right? As I said, that's, on, that's just one valid chain. And later they will uh, share the chain and all the nodes will just adopt one, uh, just one chain in the end. Let's see the second. Uh, the second work is the uh, is about to combine the blockchain with the signature based uh, engine detection. So this work is uh, is they actually they use the blockchain to have to build uh, to build a trusted the pattern database the pattern database right for different IDS nodes. It's the same. So they can they can also to track. Right, the share the the signatures, right? Because different nodes, they can you can share the uh, the rules, the patterns with uh, with others, right? You can enhance your own pattern database, 
So we we can track track the share the, the the patterns, and later we can build a trusted signature on the base. Because for the inside the attackers, they can try to share some false information and the false alarms there, right? Okay, the third, uh, the third research work right, is very interesting because uh, they focus on the anomaly-based detection, right? Anomaly-based detection. So it's similar to the uh, signature-based detection. So for the anomaly-based detection, they just share the machine learning models. So after each node, they, they train their own models, right? They, they train their own models, and then they just sh share, share the ledger, share the train. And the, other nodes will track whether the model uh, is a good fit right to their uh, scenario or whether the model uh, is true or not right or, or is legitimate or there could be some malicious uh, data right on it then it, it can reject it right so in the end they, they will they will build right? they will build a trusted the machine learning model that can be used by all the nodes. Okay, the fourth uh, works actually they uh, they take the snot, uh, they take the snot in the experiment. They also consider the uh, SDN. The uh, the main idea is that right they use the SDN, especially the SDN we call it software defined networking, right? Software defined networking SDN, because we use the uh, Controller because the controller is a central controller, so it, it can quickly, uh, it can quickly collect the collect all the data information, analyze the data, and it all can share share the share the uh, information there, share the information there. So 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 it can combine actually it's combine the signature based uh, ideas right here, and. Uh, but there and use the controller use the controller can distribute the patterns uh, in a fast manner in a fast in a quick manner right to all the to all the other to all the other nodes uh, to all the other nodes okay this is another uh the fifth uh, research work so actually they aims to build a collaborative trust based packet theater packet theater yeah so the main uh the main challenge here is that how to generate the blacklist right because we need to use the blacklist so we can filter the traffic from from this ip address then how to generate the blacklist right so here we can apply the blockchain to help us to build uh, to build uh, a trusted blacklist right a trusted blacklist so basically the information is the same because it, it the blockchain can help to ensure the the integrity of the shared information right the shared information among different nodes so then we can say we can ensure the shared information uh, is cracked and then of course the build the playlist is valid Okay, so here, uh, this work is trying to com uh, combine blockchain with the challenge-based collaborative engine detection. The challenge-based collaborative engine detection means that the CIDS, they use the challenge-based trust management. For the trust-based trust management, it, it sends a, mess a kind of message called challenge, right? Uh, to evaluate the reputation of another node, of another node. A challenge is a kind of message which can contain, for example, a set of the alarms and the request another node to provide the uh, the severity, the severity, right? The severity, and then uh, you will receive the feedback from different uh, from the target nodes, and then you can combine the received feedback with the ex expected uh, answer, right? Because when you send the challenge, you know you you know the severity there. It's like it's it's very really like an exam because the teacher you distribute the paper, the exam paper to all the students, and then later you collect the exam paper. 
because of course the teacher you know the correct answer you know the answer right there and then you can give a grade to each uh, each each student right the the grade the grade is similar to the trust value for each student yeah so that's the main uh, idea main idea here so here's the same so the, uh sorry uh, here so it could share some of the <coughs> the malicious feedback right and each node they can check and share the suspicious feedback uh, to the train and then all the nodes can verify the feedback whether it's whether it's a malicious feedback or not okay and this work is uh, published in uh, in the last year okay so it's very interesting so actually they they try to build many the they call it micro blockchain because they they want to divide it divide it the platform in many uh, smaller area so you can use some uh micro blockchain to improve the efficiency uh, improve the efficiency because we, <coughs> sorry because we know because we know when the blockchain becomes longer right uh the speed will right will go down so yeah so to mitigate this issue they developed many the micro blockchain and uh, each uh each micro blockchain is just uh, targeted for one smaller uh, area right area so in this case it can improve the efficiency okay i think this is the uh, last one okay so uh, in this work also they combine the blockchain with the challenge based uh collaborative entry detection uh, the challenge based ideas so it's the same so we uh, we normally we have a separate layer we call the blockchain uh, layer and then uh, the uh, another layer is the CIDS. so in this case we don't need to modify the CIDS itself right so it's most uh it's more scalable so here very similar to the uh, to the previous work right in uh, in 2019 so this is a new work published this year so actually uh, they they try to verify a pair of the challenge and the request the challenge i just uh, in, uh, explained right uh, the request is is a uh, is another message it's a normal message which we used to request request the uh, recommendations from other nodes when we do the alarm aggregation the alarm aggregation is a big uh, benefit provided by CIDS uh, or CIDN right because it means we uh, we try to improve the detection accuracy and the detection performance for example the DDoS so we need to seek the advice from other from other nodes so later we can check whether it's a real attack or not right so that's we have the alarm aggregation process so here because there could be some advanced insider attacks uh, advanced insider attacks so they may identify the challenge right so in, in that case they only respond truthfully to challenge but they still send a false information to a request uh, to a request so in this case we verify the pair of the challenge and the request feedback Right. and then we can also use the blockchain so each node can check can check the pair and if and to identify the malicious pair right and we can identify the malicious nodes uh, based on this okay uh i have i have introduced many the blockchain based uh, cids or cidn so before we try to use the blockchain the first question is that whether we need a blockchain right because in in old days there's no blockchain but we can still to do uh <clears throat> to realize our idea because there are many the distributed database uh, technologies there that we can use okay so here i think uh, i like this uh this figure because it's very uh, easy to understand so you just track your requirements right for example where, whether you need to store the state and then you can uh, to judge yes or no and then you judge whether you uh, there there are there are multiple writers right and you, whether you need an online the search 
uh, the trusted third party, the TDP there, right? And also or, or writer's name or trusted, right? And later you can you can know whether you need blockchain and which type of blockchain you need. Right? So it's very interesting. Okay, before the end, we know so blockchain uh, also there are many uh, issues, right? Many <coughs> suffer many issues. For example, the energy, the cost, right? For example, for the POW, we, we may waste many the computational resources. And, and also the latency and the complexity, right? When like, for example, the Hyperledger or the Historium, when the train becomes longer, uh, the, the performance will go down, right? And also there are many the security privacy issues and the, different organi organizations, they may try to develop their own blockchain technologies or uh, <coughs> their own train for that. Okay, and there are also some of the management issues, right? How to handle, right? How to handle different uh, the nodes and how to achieve the consensus when, when, the, when, the, uh, <coughs> when the train becomes really uh, larger, right? Okay. So actually you can also check the paper for uh, more detail. Okay, uh, in the last, I, I'd like just to um, point out some of the future uh, directions, especially in HD detection, yes. So that's the topic today. So first for data sharing, right? The so blockchain is good because uh, we can uh, use the blockchain to ensure the data integrity, right? The data in integrity. And then later we can also try to apply some of the data privacy, uh, the privacy preserving uh, schemes here so we can provide the data privacy as well. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good topic. And then is the uh, alert exchange as the LX they, uh, they introduced, right? So it's a, it's a direct use, right? Because we just apply the blockchain to help us to ensure uh, the integrity of the uh, of the shared al alarms, right? The shared alarms. Another direction is the trust computation, trust management, right? So, uh, so right now, especially not only in detection, but in other like the IoT or other distributed systems, right? So, how to establish a trust management a scheme, right? It's very important. It's very important. So we can use the blockchain. So first, with blockchain, we don't need a trusted a third party, right? This is a very uh, useful uh, feature. And also uh, with the blockchain, we can ensure to share the information. <coughs> ah, sorry, we can, we can uh, ensure the integrity of the shared information. Yeah. And uh, we can, later we can use this uh, feature to, uh, uh, to enhance the robustness of the trust management scheme. Yeah, so it's very important. One more question, Dr. Meng. Okay, um, I'm uh, finished very soon. So maybe, okay. yes. Yeah, so All maybe right. after talk, yeah. Just sure. uh, right. two minutes, yeah, just, just two minutes. It's very important, uh, again, again, yeah. So blockchain is a solution, right? So blockchain just is a, is a technology. So we need to avoid, right? So. The blockchain is a solution looking for a problem, right? So, or we can see uh, right now there are many blockchain uh, papers, so we can we can use blockchain, we can apply blockchain here and there. But basically, when we do the research, so first we need to think about the problem, right? And later we can think about whether we need blockchain, rather than we just think about blockchain and how we use it, right? So. We need to focus on our traditional uh, solutions to some issues and the challenges, but keep an eye, of course, uh, pay attention to some to these emerging technologies. So I have to say, the blockchain right now is very uh, it's very useful, uh, especially in some areas. It's it's, it's really good, right? but not for all for all uh, topics. Right? So you, you need to think about you 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 need to make some balance, uh, make a balance there, and the, 
look into your scenario. Uh, it's case by case. Okay. Okay, so thanks for your time and the listening. Okay, and thanks again for the invitation. And then let's uh, let me check the uh, the questions. Sure. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Thank you. Oh, I still cannot see the the chat. So, or maybe you can just uh, let me know the the question. Sure. Let me read it for you. Can you explain more about whether to use blockchain specifically? What is meant to buy online trusted third party? Mm hmm mm hmm uh, well, uh, sorry, maybe. Okay, I, I can see, I can see the, sorry, I can see the question. Explain more about whether to use uh, blockchains, what is meant by online trusted uh, third party? <coughs> yeah, I think it's a good question because, because, it means online, you know, because we can also do some offline, offline work there, right? Yeah. If you just need offline, uh, offline function, offer you you don't need it, right? Or yeah, you have some other choice, so you can check whether you need online. The trusted third party means that, for example, there are two parties A and B. For example, uh, you and me, right? So we want to, uh, communicate with with each other, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't. We don't we don't know each other. Then maybe we need a third party, trusted third party. So it can introduce you to me and me to you, right? It or we can say it's a, it's, it's like a CA, right? Uh, certificate of authority is a CA. Yeah, yeah. So the trusted trusted third party. So we all we trusted this party. So mm -hmm. but it's a third party, not you, not me. Yeah. All right. It's also valid for the certifications as well when you connect the web server. You yes. need some sort of certification, and that was given by the third party, I guess. Yes, because we all, mm -hmm. we assume we all trust, right, the authority. Right. So we all trust the certificate. Yeah. Let me check if is there any other question. Yep. Thanks for the questions. Yeah, I think it's really good. For the Intel SGX, I think it's a very it's a very good point. It's a very good point. Yeah. So you. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, can can look in, uh, look closer to this to this point. Yeah. I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, do you think we can use the blockchain also for the intrusion prevention systems? You just talked about the intrusion detection, but how about intrusion prevention? Uh, yeah. So think? basically, yeah. So basically, the answer is yes because actually. Uh, in genome prevention, the IPS is just an advanced version of IDS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the IDS is the basis for the IPS. So it's the same because for, even for IPS, uh, you you can uh, so we can apply the blockchain to help us to ensure the shared the integrity of the shared information, mm -hmm. right? Because we so even for the uh, IPS, we need to ensure the shared inf the shared data, right? Mm -hmm. And also for IPS because it's very similar to the firewall, right? So I'm not sure whether you still remember, I just mentioned one blockchain-based uh, packet theater, right? Mm -hmm. so, so you can apply the blockchain there. So to build a trusted blacklist, and then you can use the blacklist to help you to do the packet, packet theater, to filter some malicious traffic. So basically, the, the, the yeah, the answer is yes. There is a one more question, but I got this question from the direct message. It says, could you talk about more about blockchain applications on IoT considering intrusion detection? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I, I can see that there are many the blockchain applications uh, mm -hmm. in IoT, but they, <coughs> but, <coughs> sorry. But it depends, right? It depends because even when you mention the IoT, it's still a, a very large scope, a large scope. Because with IoT, you, uh, we can do many, we can, we can, we can do many the blockchain applications there, right? So uh, I'm not sure whether whether the questions can be can be narrowed down. So it's easy to uh, to to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You already mentioned a little bit about this. So I think 
that will be mm -hmm. enough. And if there's another question, I have one more question. This is not a technical question, more likely your okay. advice to the young professionals. So any suggestions to young professionals who like to follow your footsteps academically? What would you say? To, 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 follow, to follow the work, right? Yeah, follow the, your steps. Uh, like uh, okay, you, uh, as I mentioned, you okay, okay, I, I, too many. Okay, yes, uh -huh. yes. yeah, I, I I get it, I get it. I think mm -hmm. as the young professional, I think the first one is uh, is your own uh, motivation, uh, your mm -hmm. motivation and your target, right? So you need you need the uh, of course, uh, I'm sure that you all of you you have the motivation, right, to to go there, and then the the target. Because for each step, you need to have a, maybe a small target there. So you can to measure whether you are successful or whether you are satisfied, right? So you have mm -hmm. a small uh, target and later you can, uh, you can do some self evaluation there. And also you need to follow some others, right? Because mm -hmm. you need to, you need to, uh, choose you need to choose a topic or area that you you have an interest because interest uh, i think is very important yeah very important yeah because you have to uh denote uh, devote your time uh, mm -hmm. dedicate yourself to to the research right so mm -hmm. <coughs> you it's better for you to do a literature search right there and you can find a scope mm -hmm that you have interest and later I, uh, I like i like for example you you can focus on some topics for example yeah the blockchain uh, blockchain mm -hmm. yeah because right now i think uh it's easy for you to uh to how do you say to pr produce a more uh or how do you say ah uh, for example, to, to publish uh, more papers, right? If you have a good uh, have a good topic uh, or direction, research direction, so it's very important. For example, you have the blockchain, but later you need to think about. Uh, for example, for the blockchain, then yeah, how to use the blockchain uh, in in which uh, topic? So you need to think about whether you need the blockchain, right there. So you need to think about a, a good direction, and later. You just to <coughs> to to track uh, the related work, uh, related work, and then yes, you 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 need to start to start some uh, work. Of course, so first maybe you can only do some initial or some uh, very simple um, the evaluation or some simple um, idea, but when you have more, right? You read more and you have. You have no, you have a good understanding later. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can, you, you can get improved. You can get improved. And also, I think uh, for me, uh, take me as an example. So when I uh, when I did my PhD, so yes, uh, my topic is in entry detection, right? And I know at that time, at that time, I know it's 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 a not that good topic because it's a it's a bit old it's a bit old right? it's a bit old mm -hmm. so it's not that easy for you to make some to make some uh <clears throat> to make to make a big impact or you can uh, propose some very very important uh, algorithms or or ideas there because the the cake is small right you know the cake is small mm -hmm. and the uh, you need to find some, right? Bigger, bigger cake there, or or new cake, or new cake there, right? <laughs> I think I think that's uh, that's very important. But uh, 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 don't worry or don't uh, don't be a uh, hush to that because <clears throat> because you need some time. You need some time. Yeah, you need some time. You can just read more the references and you can try to find right find the current trend the developing trends uh,
and try to you can try to uh yep maybe my collection is not that stable so sorry that yeah and then later you you can <clears throat> try to publish some work and get familiar with this uh, with this field yeah and then later you can improve your idea <clears throat> and Can you guys hear me or is it the Professor Meng or? Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, it is Dr. Meng then. We lost the connection, I guess. Okay, he's here. Dr. Meng, can you hear me? Dr. Meng? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay, my... you're back. Yes, uh, yeah, my connection is unstable, so sorry for that. That's okay. Yeah. So thank you very much, Dr. Meng. It was an honor to have you today. And thank you very much for the all young professionals. Anything yeah. You, yeah. Anything you want like that? Or... Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. I think there is no more question. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have more questions, of course, uh, welcome to send me an email. Yeah, so we can discuss. Yeah. Great. All right, have a good one. Bye -bye. Okay, uh, and sir, uh, after we uh, after we uh, stop the recording, uh, we can say a few words. Mm -hmm. Go ahead.